If we create a separate layer here, we can again square off using the tangents. Let's just name these. Here is probably the most important concept to know when you're doing a track like this. Because the finger is coming across the phone, it has to be above it in the layer. This is the way Mocha works in terms of working out which layer has precedence over another. If I track forwards from here, making sure I turn off the track for the finger. You can see this time the phone tracks very very well because the finger is no longer part of the problem. We can look at this by switching our track mats on. You can see here that the finger has been cut out of the search area. Now we can track backwards. Once we've finished the track, we can turn on our surface and then align it to the corners of the screen. Keep in mind the surface is what is linked to the tracking data and this is what we'll be exporting at the end. We can also insert a clip just to see how well it's worked. Keep in mind this is a preview, so when the finger comes across it's still going to go underneath. Now that we have this phone layer tracked, we can turn it off. Turn off the track, and begin to work on the finger for the comp later on. Let's just turn our surface off. What we need to do now is refine the rotor around the finger so we can put it back on top of the phone when we get it into our compositing package. In this instance too, we're also going to be dealing with motion blur. We can use our feathering edges to compensate for this by dragging in and out. Our inner selection tool drags the inner point in and our edge tool drags out. Auto automatically selects between the two. And both select together. While you're working with uh, rotoscoping, it's quite often nice to turn on your mats and turn off colorize so you can see the foreground object you're rotoscoping a little bit better and how much the edges are being affected. Rather than bore you with a few minutes of me tweaking a roto, I've loaded up a previous file. 
You can see here that I've tweaked most of the edges to accommodate for the motion blur, and that it now progresses through the rest of the shot. Where the roto doesn't matter outside here, I've been a little bit rougher. You can see also if I turn on the mats where the fall off is being revealed. Now that we have this layer, it's ready to be exported for the next part.